Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And I just want to show you guys something really quick. Remember when I said that I'm going to let you guys be the coaches? I'm just the head coach. You guys are the assistant coaches. So I'm going to let you guys dictate a lot of things in this dynasty. And one thing I took from you guys already is you guys told me to go after some JUCO recruits. And I forgot your name. Sorry. Shout out to you, whoever said it. But you told me to go after some JUCO recruits. So I did that. I went out there and look who I found. I found a 77 overall Juco and let's just look he's from Lima Ohio he's then 151 ranked outside linebacker how is that even possible but look at his overall it's 77 and just look at this I unlocked 25% because I only have uh, that trait to unlock 25% look at his acceleration it is 99 i can already tell this guy is gonna be a beast so i don't want to waste any time with this guy because i'm not far behind because look at the fourth place guy is 295 i'm not far behind but let's offer him a scholarship put him on as many as i can because if i get him he will surely help my defense i have some other guys here uh that i found at the juco level a quarterback 71 overall he's the, another juco six foot though he is kind of shorter but if you saw those ratings he's got 85 throw power and he's got some running ability it looks like so when i unlock the rest of his traits uh i'm gonna go after him too and another uh juco receiver chad ball 88 excel right now 72 catch which isn't too bad but he's 73 overall i mean it'll definitely be a big boost over what i currently have so i'm gonna have to adjust some of these guys here uh i have a lot of rated a lot of points on some of these guys but i do need some of these guys because this is an athlete i need a receiver i definitely need attack which I definitely need so i definitely need those guys but let's just look at our matchup going up against minnesota let's just look at how we are rated versus them because they are in the big 10 we our plans are to get to the big 10 one day not next year but uh if you look at what we've done so far i mean we're actually rated higher than them in points per game so maybe our defense can actually show uh show up some but look at look at our ranks on defense 109th in total defense 101st in rush defense 89th in pass defense i mean we are just straight horrible the only good thing is that we did force more turnovers last game than we gave up so uh that's the good thing and it looks like minnesota gives up at least uh at least to these past these two games at least two more turnovers than they uh generate so let's just hop into this game going up against minnesota this is one of the few games that we can actually deem as maybe winnable we don't know but let's just hop into this game let's get it let's go we are here for the first home game finally and let's just get into this right away minnesota they have a couple of good running backs i mean they have smith there and i mean this isn't going to be an easy game at all and as you can see on the first drive we do get them to punt Bruh. But look at that, man. I had a wide open field on that one, but I'm telling you, controlling Ingram is like controlling a truck. I mean, he literally is not agile at all, and that's going to hurt me, especially if I have him in on passing downs and he gets a play out of the backfield. Bruh. It's going to hurt me, but Minnesota takes over. We punt early, and they give the ball to Kobe McCrary, but look at that block. Bruh. Look at Look at that Damn. cheese. That block was insane. He got up and then got blocked again. Got two pancakes and one play on the same player. I don't even know if that's even happened before in this game. But as you can see, they're on the goal line now. But going for it on a fourth down. Motion to running back. But Spencer is there to stop Rodney Smith from getting into the end zone. And Marquette's deep. Look at that. We had four people in on that tackle. And we take over inside of the five-yard line. And Carrington dropping back on a second and ten. Look at that. I mean, who is that going to? And on a third down, 
dropping back back to the two yard line, throwing an absolute dime that time to Herman Rogers. Herman Rogers is somebody that had to get involved more because if he's our best player, you have to find a way to get your best players the ball, especially when your team's this bad. So Marquette almost gets a first down on that one, but on a third and four, Carrington's gonna find Stanford in the middle. The one thing I, I'm afraid of with Stanford is that he drops passes, not very good at securing the ball, but I mean, he gets it done there. So Ingram, as you can see, trying to get him going in the passing game. But look at this guy, wide open. I got Donnie Wolf in on this play. And look where he throws it. He throws it way over to the left, right into the free safety's hands. But luckily, it's a drop pick. But on a third down, attempting a curl route that time in the corner, makes a good play on the ball. So uh, Minnesota takes over on offense. And it's a 0-0 game. Look at this. We're already at the end of the first quarter. It's still a 0-0 game. And look at Noah, Noah Carter with the interception. Look at this pick. This is insane. Look at this warp through his body. He's a ghost. I didn't even know he's a ghost. Go straight through his body for the pick. And you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it because I need anything I can get. They get all the Heisman cheese. Give me some ghost cheese on that one. <laughs> But here we go, man. Inside the 20-yard line, Carrington once again missing a wide open receiver. So on a third and five, dropping back, having, you know, some pressure there. But look at who's open. It's Medley to the two-yard line. So we're inside the five-yard line. So on the second and goal, uh, a couple of plays later, Pitch to Ingram, but look at that blocking. Bruh. They just straight up ignored the end on that one, and he gets in for the sack. I don't even understand what was going on on that play. That should have been a clear touchdown, but on this next play, third and goal, did you see B wide open on that play? I can't believe I missed him over the middle. So we settled for a field goal, and that should have easily been a touchdown. But we do. We're playing some pretty good defense. This 3-4 defense is shutting down the Minnesota run game early on in this game. So there's three minutes left in this half. And here we are. Getting the ball to Glenn Hall. And he can't get anything done. But on 3rd and 13, attempting a curl route. But this one's going to get broken up. McCray cannot hold on to that one. So... This Minnesota offense, I mean, they're not doing much running the ball, but here they do a jet sweep and get 12 yards to Rashad still. Getting past the 50-yard line, but looking on the next play, Sergio Parrish gets in for the stop that time. So now they're facing a third and 15, and Spencer, he's there. Actually, that's Frederick. Frederick is there for the pass breakup, and, you know, the thing is, our safeties, our safeties are our strong spot right now. I mean, they're just everywhere on the field. They don't give up many big plays. They're always around the ball. And that's what we got to do with our other positions. We got to have people that can get around the ball, but this time they're getting in for the sack. Ken Carrington's taking another sack. So now, I mean, that's halftime. 3 nothing at half. That was the defensive half. And the Minnesota defense can't offense actually can't do anything versus three four defense of ours. So coming on the second half, we're gonna try to get the run game going. But Glenn Hall, I mean, he has decent speed, 86. But I mean, 86 compared to the rest of the NCAA is not fast at all. And as you can see, Ryan Cantrell, he finally gets a pass there. And uh, remember earlier, Donnie Wolf had that errant throw to the safety at least. Uh, we got that one completed. So Carrington's now past the 50-yard line, but that 86 feet, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Not fast compared to the rest of the NCAA. Glenn Hall uh, cannot get any space on that one, but Stanford on a third down catches a 10-yard ball. So now we're facing a first and 10. Inside the red zone, Medley's going to get open over the middle for a second and two, a manageable second and two. So we attempt to run the ball this time, and look at this, man. We have our third string running back in pain, and the end gets blocked right into him. So now we're facing a third and seven. And on third and seven, we should have waited a split second longer, and the middle linebacker knocks that one down. So we settle for another field goal. So it is six nothing here, probably towards the end of the third quarter. Three minutes left in this third quarter, but they're getting McCrary involved in the passing game. And I'm telling you, this double running back, 
monster that they have. I mean, that that's all that's getting the ball. I mean, they're just – look at this. Pitch play to McCreary, and then on the next play, they'll probably give it to Smith. Look at that. I called it. Look at that. Smith gets the ball to the outside, and the blocking is perfect on that. Up to the 25-yard line, so facing a first and 10 inside the 25. Once again, giving it to Smith. But Finley Bruh. straight runs past my don't break down, and Smith gets into the end zone for the touchdown. And that shutout we had lasted for a half, but Minnesota finally broke it open. But look at this wide open guy over the middle, Herman Rogers, and Carrington is just off the mark this game. I mean, this is just bad. I mean, he's 17 for 29 up to this point. But, I mean, besides that, besides those 17 incompletions, it's only 136 yards he has completed. So, I mean, we have to punt the ball once again. I mean, this offense is just stagnant. We are not doing anything on offense. We're probably giving away this game to Minnesota because now in the second half, this 3-4 defense, this offensive line has finally worn us down and Smith Rodney Smith gets in for the touchdown and our defense you can just tell we're it's a totally different defense out the second half but look at this Carrington easy throw to be that time and look where he throws he throws it behind him so I had to put in Donnie Wolf I'm like that's enough Donnie Wolf gets in now but on a third and ten I put him in a bad situation third and ten he gets hit there trying to make something uh, out of no receivers being open but on the ensuing possession, we forced a punt, and Minnesota starting to throw the ball now. They get it out to the receiver, Holland Jr., but on the next play, McCrary gets the handoff, breaking a tackle, getting a nice block on the outside, getting up to the 20-yard line. So Marquette's defense, that bend but don't break is definitely breaking now. In the second half, in the fourth quarter, especially here, they're doing anything they want, running the ball. Uh, passing the ball, but this time we do get in for the sack that time. That time is Ramsauer, but on the third and goal, Rhoda's going to drop back, have a screen play, and look at this once again, Bruh. running straight past Rodney Smith. Don't break down for the tackle. I'm going to start breaking down. I, I promise you, I'm going to start breaking down. But, man, look at this. Donnie Will's got to come back out on the next drive, throwing the ball to Hall. I mean, it's 350 left in this half. I can do this. I mean, I can come back. So on a first and 10, uh, rolling out to the right once again. But Wolf finds Medley over the middle. And Keon Medley doing a pretty good job from the slot. Getting open once again here. But I attempt to throw the ball deep. And that was going to be incomplete. So on a fourth and 17, you got to go for it. Pressured. And I throw it into traffic. And Miller is not going to come up with it. That's going to be a pick by the Minnesota defense. Our first turnover of the game, and I mean, that's going to pretty much end it for the Marquette Golden Eagles. And to add insult to injury, trying to get the ball to throw it away that time, 20 seconds left in the game, I try a one last play, trying to throw the ball deep on a second and 32, and actually, Medley had them be on that play, but Donnie Wolf underthrows them, and man, Minnesota after getting shut out in the first half, wins 24 to six. I mean, we had two, two field goals. I mean, two field goals for the whole game. That is not acceptable. Look at Donnie Wolf. I mean, he had a 7.7 .7 quarterback rating, but Carrington wasn't any better. I mean, these guys could not move the ball. And I mean, look at this. Our rushing attack couldn't do anything. Receivers couldn't do anything. I mean, our leading receivers on running back. I mean, that just can't happen so man we got some changes i think i'm going to make a change at quarterback i need to think about it a little bit we do have virginia coming up next week so we're gonna want to win that game it's a rivalry game we're gonna want to win that game it's and it's on the road so man what do you guys think do you guys think donnie wolf should be the starter since I can use his legs a little more, or Carrington because he's a little more accurate. He had a bad game, but it is his second game. I mean, give him a break a little bit, but Donnie Wolf is itching to come in. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think I should do. Let's get it.